What's good YouTube? Sam Webb back again with another Shopify video. This time teaching you how to put swatches on a PDP or a product page. So if I scroll down, I have this uh, this Cupcakes product and it has a few variants. It's got some icing which has cream cheese, chocolate, vanilla and red velvet, chocolate, uh, vanilla for the base. Uh, and and here you can select your quantity and it shows the price <clears throat> and we've got add to cart and the description uh, this is what default comes when you create a slate theme if I hop over to the, uh, the, the code see that on the template and product.liquid we it, in, it includes a section called product and then it includes a bunch of JSON data for schema.org or structured data and this is important for uh, Google rankings and making sure that when somebody sees your product on Google what they see is uh, the, the proper product name and image and URL and description and things like that. If we hop into the section uh, it's, it's one the page is all one big section and you've got your image images right here you got your thumbnails here your product title and vendor right and then you've got uh, the product form here and a bunch more information on the products the price and button and description way down here at the bottom and that reflects what we have here so we've only got one image as you notice that the thumbnails had the was checking if, if there was more than one image before it shows up so right now we're not seeing the thumbnails then we've got the title uh, the vendor and that product form and the description so uh, this is all well and good but what, what I would prefer in this case right we've got different colors for these different uh, for these different uh, types of cupcake Right, so what would be nice here is if we had swatches that instead of saying the name of the color would would show a little circle swatch of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some CSS uh, just to get this page looking nice and then I'm going to come back and we can get into actually building the swatches. Okay, we are back. And as you can see, I changed a few things. So the styling is uh, a lot different here. We've got this kind of 50-50 layout. Uh, I've moved a few things around, uh, moved up the description, and changed the HTML to only do the radio buttons instead of what it was doing before where the first one was a drop down and the rest were radios. Uh, and I also updated the actual options just to look the same as the, as the image that I'm using. I'm going to quickly go to the code here just to show you some of the differences. So I've stripped out the thumbnail stuff because for this example I only plan to use one image and then I got rid of using the uh, the responsive image snippet uh, just to simplify things for this and instead I'm using I'm forcing this image to be 800 by 800 so I'm forcing a square image and I'm cropping it to the bottom because it was actually a very tall image and the cupcakes were sitting at the bottom. Uh, just a, a few minor changes that put the wrapped, the, wrapped everything in, in, in a few different divs just to just for layout purposes and put the price and, and, and product title in the same div just to get those next to each other and you know, just some, just some small small HTML changes, so here's what they look like. And the CSS uh, is just a few flex items, making sure that that left and right is both at 50%, adding a little padding here and there, uh, and, and, and custom, kind of just giving a, a, a nice little custom look to that add a cart button. But nothing too crazy on the CSS side. And really quickly, I want to show you the setup for this product. So we got product named Cupcakes. Uh, here's the description. We're using 
that image, as I mentioned, is really tall, so I wanted to kind of square that off and crop it to the bottom. And then I've got all of my variants set up. Now, I didn't, I don't, I don't need a skew. I just have one on this one. But uh, I am going to update the inventory for all of these. Just so we're not worried about uh, sold out states and things like that. And now that that's saved, we can start talking about swatches. Alright, so let's talk about swatches. Uh, I have I have two go-to ways to, to add swatches to products. And so, I'll explain my usual way first, and then I'm going to show you a much simpler way after that. So... The usual way I would add swatches, uh, because I'm a developer and I don't I don't usually run my own store, uh, I'll usually use images. And what I'll do is, based on the names of these uh, these option values, I'll create some sort of uh, image structure to where uh, my clients will be able to upload an image. And the name will follow that specific structure, and then from then on, and then on out, anytime they use a swatch or a uh, a value that has that same name, it will automatically pull that image. And uh, what a simple way to show what that image would look like is if I have so we have chocolate, or so, let's say we have cream cheese, which is what we had before. So if we have a value that's cream cheese, what I would usually do is I would require that my clients upload a JPEG that uh, starts with the word swatch and then has a handleized version of that name. So it would look something like this swatch dash cream dash cheese dot JPEG. And I would have them upload that to to uh, files that's in settings settings files and so if we go into here and we're in settings files this is where I'd have them upload that image and then at that point I can pull directly from there uh, by doing something like this right swatch dash uh, you know, value handleize dot jpeg, right? And that would basically do that would give me back something like this, or you know, whatever the actual value is, it will it will add that here. Now, uh, if if you're not building a site for clients and you're building the site for yourself, and and you're a developer or you're at least comfortable with CSS and changing code then another way to do this is by uh, by using colors instead and one of the big benefits of, of using colors is that it makes it to where you can you, you don't you're not you don't have to download a bunch of images when you visit the page right when, usually when you visit the page it's gonna read the HTML and download all the assets and if you've got, you know, 20 different swatches, that's 20, might, they might be small, but that's 20 images that has to load. That's 20 extra requests, and, and you know, depending on the size of those images, uh, they'll load in you know, however fast. They'll, they'll basically slow down the site. And so, in terms of page speed, using colors is going to be faster because there's, there's that one request that you would have done anyways, to get the CSS file and then from there it's just you know getting the color from that file and so what I've done is I've already set up the specific colors for chocolate banana and strawberry right one of the downsides of this is that anytime you you're gonna add a new color you're gonna have to come into the CSS and then do like you know, swatch and in this case I'm doing double dashes so swatch and then we do cream cheese for instance 
right? And then set that background color, whatever it is. And so that's one of the big downfalls to this, this method is that you have to come in here and manually do this. But there are, there are ways that you can, you can set up maybe theme settings to kind of handle something like this. But uh, for now, I'm just going to write it directly in here. So I've got my three colors created already. We've got this brown here. We've got this yellow. And we've got this pink. Hop back to the front end. So what I've what I've done, or what I did when I when I originally uh, restyled this page was I had to make a decision. And if you saw from from at the beginning of the video when we were looking at this page, the first element or the first uh, group of, of of values was a drop down and then the rest were going to be these uh, radio buttons so what I did in the HTML was I made it to where it's always going to be radio buttons so if we go up to right here right, it's always going to be radio buttons and then the label is going to show what that value is and the reason for this is that uh, we're going to want the swatches to be laid out in a similar way, right? All of them already on the screen rather than being in a drop down. And another big benefit to this is that there's a bit of a trick that you can do with inputs and labels, which is that uh, if you click an input, right, it'll select it. But if you have a label that's directly associated with a specific input, and these radio buttons are actually input elements of type radio. Uh, but if you click the label that's associated with it, it will still select it. And what we can do with that is use the label to, uh, we can hide the radio and use the label instead to show the colors that we're trying to, to show. And so what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add a few classes. The class on input is going to be uh, hidden radio. Actually, we're going to do radio hidden. Double dash hidden, and then class on the label is going to be a label swatch, and we're also going to and and, and, that, and that that trick I showed you with the handle, uh, we're going to do the exact same thing here. It's, instead of making an image, we're just going to do that class that we had. So if we hop back over here, we have swatch, and then. Uh, Kind of color or value. So I'm going to paste that in and replace this with value and use a filter of handleize. Oops, wrong thing. Use that filter handleize, which will uh, convert it to be all lowercase, replace the spaces with dashes, remove special characters. Right, I think I may have explained that in an earlier video, but, but that's what a, a handle is in Shopify. It's, the, it's basically whatever the value of something is but all lowercase and spaces replaced with dashes and uh, no special characters I'm going to save that and we're going to let this refresh now nothing's going to change because we haven't done anything with these classes so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to Add that class and add this class to our CSS so that we can style these. And so, what do we want to do? Well, first, we want to style the swatches, right, and make them look like swatches. So, uh, as you notice, I, I, I added a span within the label just to separate out the actual text so that we can. So we can hide that. So I'm going to say S span, and I'm going to display none, and that's going to basically erase the swatch entirely. Even though, as you saw, they had the background colors. Actually, I'm going to add that back. Let me just remove that real quick, just so I can quickly show you that uh, with those classes I added, we already got the background color, right? Because we've 
we've got this class on there for each of those. So we've got the background color, but it doesn't really look like a swatch. So we want to get rid of that text. So let's add that display none back in. And then as I showed a minute ago, it's actually all the way gone because these are inline elements and so they don't have a height or they take whatever's inside of them to give them their height and width. Uh, since nothing is inside of the element, it doesn't have one. So what we're going to have to do is change that to display inline block. So still not have any height and width, so we'll have to manually do that height. 50 pixels, width 50 pixels. And just, uh, you know, cupcakes around, so just to, to uh, keep things looking, looking nice, we're going to say border radius. 50%. We're also going to add a border of two pixels, solid and transparent. Now the reason I'm adding this transparent border is because we're going to want some way to show when we have an active swatch, right? And I'm going to show that with a border around it. And I don't want elements to, to move around when a border gets added. So, what, so uh, here's another trick that you can do is to give them a border that is invisible so that when you change that border color it's only changing the color it's not adding a new it's not changing the uh, the layout of the page that's XP it should be PX and then we're also going to put a margin right of five pixels so let's save that See what we get. So now we got these circles. When we click them, it's selecting the proper thing, right? So that's that's good. That's what we want. But as I mentioned, we want to have that an active state, that border around here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use something called uh, the adjacent sibling selector. And so first, we're going to say, all right, if this radio button is checked. Right, we're gonna say do this plus, which is the adjacent sibling selector. Uh, label dot label swatch. So basically, whenever you're checked, whenever the radio is checked, then what we're gonna do is grab the adjacent element that's called label swatch, which is our swatch, and we're gonna uh, change the border color to that blue that we had earlier. So that blue that we're using for other things. And if I save that, now we're going to have this blue border around here. So at this point, so before, if we would have clicked these and we didn't have this radio, we wouldn't have been able to tell what was selected. But now, if we hide those radios, we can see what's selected. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide these. So you could do display none, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to instead do a opacity zero, right? And then I'm gonna say uh, we're actually not gonna remove the point. Actually, I'm just gonna go with display none. go with a, a, a much easier example. Right, and so now if I select uh, say strawberry and chocolate and I hit add to cart, we have strawberry chocolate added to cart. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So uh, what we've gone over today is how you can how you can get custom looking swatches on your page using still using the default logic that comes with Shopify Slate. There are more complex ways that you can do this without using uh, the form logic. Yeah, if you're using, you can use a lot of JavaScript to handle this and to uh, get some really custom things going, but this is a very simple way to kind of get you started and get you going. So hopefully this helps. Uh, if it did help you and you did like this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And uh, and thank you. See you next time.